War never changes. Hello fellow Chosen, this is Kato Genesis, and welcome to a guide to the Highwaymen of Fallout 2. If you've ever wished to traverse the wastes in a fusion-powered beast on wheels, you've come to the right place. This guide will go over the location of the Highwaymen, how to get it working, how to keep it charged, and the three upgrades you can obtain for it. Let's start by going to where the Highwayman is located so you know where to go back to once you start finding parts. Before you get it in working order, you should know where the Highwayman itself is parked. The car is found in the west side of the Den, a settlement just south of Klamath. It's in the care of a fellow by the name of Smitty. When asked about it, Smitty will reply that while most of the car is in working order, it still needs a fuel cell controller, and Smitty himself will need 2,000 bucks to install the part and let you drive off with it. After learning this info, be ready for a long trek and a lot of encounters, because this is going to be a trip to the far east end of the map. If random encounters prove difficult, a decent outdoorsman skill can help mitigate them. Heading east will take you past Modoc to the two settlements known as Gecko and Vault City. The fuel cell controller that you need for the Highwayman is located in Gecko, but Skeeter, the ghoul who has it, wants a super toolkit in trade. Smitty, back at the den, will sometimes sell a super toolkit, but at a steep price of 1500 bucks. Since we're next to Vault City anyway though, why don't we just get the super toolkit for the cost of some time instead? Once you've stepped into the well-defended Vault City limits, go up the street past the servant pens, tent, clinic, and general store to the green exit grid. Saunter up to the gate and get yourself a day pass. If you remove the armor you're wearing, Wallace will simply give you a day pass and tell you to talk to the first citizen. You can skip the meeting with her for now and instead, after entering the gate, take a right and walk into the maintenance center. Here you'll meet Valerie. If you ask what's going on, you'll learn that she appears to be missing some crucial tools. Offer to find her a set of pliers, aka a tool, and a wrench, and she'll be able to grant you a super tool kit when her shipment arrives. If you haven't already found a tool, you need not look far. Right next door to the maintenance center, in fact. One of these amenities offices should have some pliers for sale. If not, you can also check the general store in the courtyard. A wrench, on the other hand, can be a bit more challenging to locate, but there are two possible places to find one in Vault City. One is inside a footlocker in the vault itself, but that requires you to be a citizen to access. If you go out to the courtyard and buy Cassidy's Bar, there's a little boy by the name of Curtis. Speak to Curtis, and you'll learn that he's missing his Mr. Nixon doll. You can actually find the Mr. Nixon doll behind Cassidy's Bar. Return the doll to Curtis and wait nearby. The boy will carry on a conversation with the doll, including having a little tea party, then reveal that among some rocks behind the bar, he had buried his dad's wrench. That enables you to rummage through this pile of rocks and retrieve the wrench for yourself. Take the tool and the wrench back to Valerie in Vault City's downtown and she'll request that you wait a couple of days and return. You cannot rest downtown due to day pass restrictions, so travel back outside to the courtyard and wait 48 in-game hours via your Pip-Boy, then return to Val one last time to learn that she received a shipment of five Super Toolkits and is more than okay with giving you one of them. With your Super Toolkit in hand, the next step from here is to leave Vault City through the courtyard and travel to Gecko. From the entrance, walk to the north end of the settlement to the Gecko Junkyard. There will be a building ahead behind a fence. Get inside and speak to Skeeter, the ghoul gadgeteer. He'll quickly notice that you're holding the very toolkit he's looking for and will offer the fuel cell controller in trade straight across. With said fuel cell controller in hand and once you've finished your business in Gecko for now, you may leave Gecko the way you came in and speed walk all the way back to the den's west side. Here's hoping you scavenged all you could and saved up your cash because it's time to talk to Smitty and get that highwayman running. Approach Smitty with the part and he'll ask for 2,000 bucks before he gets to work on the car. After handing him the money and the part, there's a short time transition and the car is yours. Congratulations, you now have a highwayman. But now that you have it, know that it's fully charged to start with, but will lose fuel as it's used, just like cars just so happen to do. Fuel levels are shown on an indicator to the left of the car icon while you're traveling the map. 
When your highwayman starts running out of juice, you'll need microfusion cells or small energy cells to charge it back up, which Smitty will even sell to you on occasion. To refuel your car, switch to the cursor and move to the car's hood, hold down the left mouse button to bring up the mini menu, and select the bag icon. This lets you choose an object from your inventory to use on the car. From here, choose the fusion cells you'd like to fuel the car with. A stack of 50 microfusion cells will charge it by 50%, and a stack of 40 small energy cells will charge it up by 20%. Keep in mind, the game will not return unused energy back to the player, so be sure the car needs the energy that you're putting into it. Next, we'll move on to the three upgrades you can get for the Highwayman to make it fast, fuel efficient, and more spacious in the trunk. The first upgrade we'll go for is the fuel cell regulator, which also takes the most steps to get. This part will double your car's fuel efficiency outright. You can find the part in Klamath, the first town you're meant to travel out of Arroyo. On the west side of Klamath is Trapper Town. After entering, you can scroll up a little ways, look past the fence, and you'll see a broken down highwayman on some blocks. Inspecting it will tell you that there's something interesting in the back seat. A useful part, perhaps? Despite it being only a few meters away from you, you'll need to go through the rat caves to actually reach it. The entrance to the rat caves are among the buildings to the northwest. If this is your first time here, you can get the key to the locked door leading there from Slim Pickett, who's waiting not far from the door that's locked. If it hasn't been implied, and if you've not been here yet, be ready to exterminate a whole lot of vermin. Zigzag through the infested buildings to the northern passage and take the ladder down. Follow the caves east until you find another ladder that leads further into the cave's depths, and you'll be in the Rat King's chambers. If you haven't already, you can opt to take care of him, then hug the north wall traveling northeast until you find another ladder that leads up this time. Since we're working towards the surface now, follow the caves a little while longer until you come to a door on the north side. This door is blocking your way to the ladder to the surface, but it will be locked. If you don't have the lockpick skill to open said door, don't fret, there's a conveniently placed shelf next to it holding some dynamite that will take care of that door just as well. You finished the Temple of Trials, so you already know how this works, right? Set the timer, drop it by the door, run away, wait for the explosion, and continue on. Taking the ladder up, you'll emerge once again in Trapper Town, but in a garage not far from the broken down highwayman. Run on over to the car, activate it, and now you'll have your fuel cell regulator. Sadly, there's no quick way to get back out except through the rat caves again. However, the Nuka-Cola machine nearby still works if you're parched. After making your way out of Trapper Town and leaving Klamath, you can return to Smitty in the den and ask him to install the regulator for 750 bucks. After which, you can sell your salvage to him and get your money back. Again, with the fuel cell regulator installed, your highwayman will be twice as fuel efficient when traveling. You'll be scooting around the map a lot before Fallout 2 is over, so why not make it less expensive? The second upgrade for the Highwayman is a little bit different, and requires your car to be stolen, but it will result in upgrades to speed and trunk space for your vehicle. You can force some Wasteland Grand Theft Auto by traveling to New Reno. Assuming you're starting from the den, travel southeast past Redding, and the next location in view should be New Reno. Once you've parked on Virgin Street, take a stroll either outside of town or down the street to the next area, then come back, and your car will be missing. Running to the parking lot will open a dialogue that says there's tire marks leading outside of town. Following those tire marks will lead you to a small location called the Chop Shop. The leader of the Chop Shop, T-Ray, will claim the car as his own when confronted until he gets Mr. Bishop to buy it anyway. The outcome of this exchange is up to you. The temptation to kill him will be strong for stealing your car then selling it back to you, but if you intend on getting the upgrade he provides, you'll need to negotiate for your car back for between $500 and $1,000, then pay for the upgrade for $500, talk him down to $300, or if your chosen one is female, you can use a more physical way of payment. After the transaction and work is complete, T-Ray will still have the money on him, so you could trade with him for your money back or bring your gang to fight his gang. After that ordeal, T-Ray's Chop Shop upgrade raises both travel speed and trunk capacity of the Highwayman. 
There is something you need to know about trunk capacity though. It applies to items size when stored instead of their weight. With this in mind, assume large things like guns and armor will take up more space than chems, hollow tapes, and keys. T-Ray does have another upgrade that he will set you up with, however you must wait to have your car stolen in New Reno until the end of the game. The upgrade is called Grav Plates, but due to some scripting issues with T-Ray, you must not have gotten your car stolen up to that point, so we won't spend much more time talking about the Grav Plates upgrade, and instead how awesome it is to store more big things in the trunk and have a faster car. The third and final upgrade for your audacious automobile even has a lovely name. Its name is Claudia. Claudia is a blower for your car, and when installed, increases your highwayman's speed even further. To obtain this final upgrade, you'll need to travel all the way down to the southeast corner of the map to the new California Republic. It's the bigger of the two markers. From the entrance, you'll be outside the city limits at the NCR Bazaar. Head past Buster's tent and the slave pens to what seems to be a vagrant just hanging out with a bunch of junk. You'll learn this potent fellow's name is Ratch, and is the one willing to install Claudia for the one-time cost of a thousand bucks. Pay Ratch and he'll ask for six hours to install the part. After the wait, speak to Ratch again and he'll announce that you may now reap the benefits of your speed boost from Claudia. If you've gotten all said upgrades, you'll burn through fuel half as quickly, move at insane speeds around the map, and have that little bit of extra storage space in the trunk. If you got something out of this guide, please show it however you see fit. If you'd like to become an immortalized supporter here on the channel, give the Patreon a look. Among being credited at the end of videos, there's a lot of other perks that come along with it. So hop over there if you have a moment. Speaking of Patreon, thanks so much to Wasteland Legends Fen, and thank you, for watching. I'm Kato Genesis, wishing you a safe and fast journey in finding the Gek.